بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به تعالى ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا منذرا بين يدي ساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فإنه لا يضر إلى نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا Indeed, all praises to God. We praise Him, we thank Him, we take assistance, we seek assistance from Him, we take refuge with Him against the evil of ourselves and the wrong of our actions. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone. Creator uncreated, without partner, without son, without sharer in His dominion. I testify that Muhammad is the seal of His messengers, the last of His prophets. Upon Him, His brother messengers, and all, every man and woman that has ever responded to the call of God and messengers. Uh, be the fullest and completest of peace and blessings until the end of days and may hearts be turned towards the source of light for that is the source of life. The um, Imam al-Tirmidhi, actually Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim and others mention, narrate the hadith about the 99 names. So how many names does Allah have? How many? Mm -hmm. Let's try once more. How many? Ah, does he though? Ah, so does he have 99? Does he have lots more? Often, um, and you know, if you, if you read the hadith in the English, it's, you can't be blamed for thinking it's 99 because there isn't, there's an, a misplaced comma in translations and that can throw things into disarray. Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'een asman. مَنْ أَحْصَاهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ The hadith is not God has 99 names. The hadith is God has 99 names which any that memorizes them shall enter paradise thereby. So it's not that he has 99 names. He has plenty of names. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To God belong the most beautiful of names. And this is a very powerful and very important point. Beauty is an intrinsic character of God's. In fact, beauty is a manifestation of God. And so Allah says, anything that is beautiful is in effect a name of God or the reflection of a name of God. And the seven heavens and the earths and all that inhabit the twain are abuzz with glorifying the praises of your Lord. And there is not a thing but does him his praises, though you cannot comprehend their method, their mode of glorification. And he is ever, uh, Halim is a beautiful thing, he's, he's ever forbearing and forgiving. So all of creation and everything that is beautiful is a tribute to the names of God. And therefore, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى To God belong the most beautiful of names. The best thing that you can say, the best that you can conceive of, the best that the human heart, the imagination, the, the feelings and emotions uh, which we have capacity for, can conceive of, belongs to Allah and more. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى And to Him belongs the loftiest example. So God has many names, but the hadith tells us there are 99, however, which have this peculiar uh, attribute that anyone that internal, man ahsaha dakhla al jannah, anyone that enumerates, and scholars have said, what does ahsaha mean? And um, a variant narration by Bukhari and Muslim has, man la yahfaduha abdun muslimun illa dakhla al jannah, or man hafidaha dakhla al jannah. Any believing servant who memorizes or preserves. Because in Arabic, of course, to memorize is to guard. So a hafidh of the Qur'an is literally a someone who guards. Hifd is to protect. It's to be vigilant over. It's not like, you know, Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as... Do you guys do nursery rhyme? Of course, we're, we're from different places here, so you probably have different ones that you know. So there are things that we, somewhere in the back of our, of our you know, the, 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 the stores of our memory boxes, we have things we pick up. You've memorized 
all sorts of things. But hefd is not simply to have stored on a hard drive. Hefd is to guard and to protect and to be vigilant over. And this is all the more emphatically stated in Man Ahsa. So God has all of these names and everything that is great and wondrous and powerful and magnificent and beautiful and true and fair and just is a reflection of the name of God. And so this is a very important thing. Why, why are we here this evening? Uh, Insha'Allah, the reason we're here this evening is because it is a part of human experience, not just the Islamic tradition, but all of the traditions that came before it. And this is shared by our Christian and Jewish traditions, but many of the others too. To, that to know God is to know oneself and to truly get to uh, appreciate God is to make sense of existence because there is no sense of existence in uh, isolation from the, the, the granter of existence, the source of existence. So to know him and to know his attributes. And so the Quran says to us, Be not like those who forgot God. So he caused them to forget themselves. They became blind to their own human nature. And they re and Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, Humanity, people, you great rebels, you great you know, free-willed uh, people, you do whatever you please. Your rebellion is against your own souls. It hurts you. It hurts you. And a society which becomes materially prosperous but spiritually defunct, spiritually impoverished, is a, a society that is in pain. And that's very clear to see. And today, you know, Allah bless our brother Nathim here, who was telling us about the plight of suffering people all over the world. But something, and he's just got back from sub-Saharan Africa, so he can tell you this. Something that you'll see, and anyone who's tra had the opportunity to travel to parts of the world where, where, where life is a struggle, where people struggle from day to day. People struggle, you know, their concerns aren't about uh, what apps they're going to download from the, the app store or, or whether to pay 50 pounds on their line rental and get the 6S iPhone, Bendy phone, or, you know, that, that their concern is how to put food, how to, how to sustain, how to uh, keep their children alive. These are the concerns. And yet, this is a fact of life. You will see the brightest and the truest smiles. And you will see a joy and a happiness in some of the most impoverished of lands. You will see that. You will see that kids who don't have shoes on their feet, and who, have, who are in ragged, uh, rags, you know, hand-me-downs, and who are, and yet they have, they have, and they and their mothers and their fathers. There is something that is, uh, where life is a struggle, where every day is a struggle, there is a determination and a joy that accompanies it. How do people smile when they've buried their children? There's hardly a couple, there is hardly a parent, a mother or a father, that has not had to bury at least one child, if not more. And this is why in, 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 in some of the poorest parts of the world, people have lots of children. It's, it's a part of our inbuilt nature because you have to factor in the fact that uh, you will lose your children. You will lose a large number of children to sickness, to, to, to malnutrition, to uh, all sorts of things. And yet there the smiles are true. No one commits, you don't hear of people committing suicide at anywhere near the rates that are commonplace in the West where our our, 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 our streets are paved and our houses are, and homes are uh, skylined and we've got Wi-Fi access and we're wearing Gucci and Armani and our phones are made in sweatshops around the world and imported to us with logos. We have, and yet there is, so this is a reality and the Quran says to us, don't be of those who forgot God, because then they forgot themselves. And Allah says, Nasullah fanasiyahum. They forgot God, so He forgot the, them. Wala yazubu al Rabbika mithqalu zarratin fi samawati wal ard wala asghara min dalik. And your Lord is never mindless of a thing, not even an atom's weight in heaven or earth. So when the Quran says they forgot God, so He forgot them, Allah's not saying He's not, you know, He's literally forgotten you. It is a part of our, in fact, from the names of God, is that he is al-hafil, he is the guard, the vigilant, right, from hifd. 
Because our, uh, the, the con God is not some distant entity who brought things into creation, said be and it became, and now allows things to. Rather Allah says, Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal arda an tazula. God it is that holds back heaven and earth from dissipating. So it's not just the first instance of creation that God is involved in, but every moment of existence is uniquely fashioned by him. Every atom that makes up every particle of every being, right? The atoms that, are, uh, that make up your index finger. Every one of those was created whenever it was created. I mean, we're told now that every seven years or so, your body has pretty much recycled itself. So, however old you are, you're really only seven years old because your every atom that is, is every, within seven years, every atom has been replaced. Atoms die and atoms are regenerated and reborn. But every, and that's something that we've learned recently, but the Quran said to us a long, long time ago, there is the heavens and the earth. It's like um, an image that's projected onto a screen or onto a TV screen. You're watching the game, the big game, and, and, and you have both sides. And, and then somebody comes and pulls out the plug and blip, it's gone. Because they're not really there. You're getting excited at them, you're shouting at them, you're telling them that, you're, that they're wet cabbages and, and your grand could kick the ball better than... But they're not there. And if someone pulls the plug, it's gone. And if somebody sort of picks up a, a, a stone and, and, and strikes it against the screen, the image goes. The image to be there for every instant, every second, every moment that it's there is being generated. And every instant re requires being regenerated. It has to be projected and then maintained, continuously projected. And the second that stops, it's interrupted, no image. There's nothing there. Well, the Quran tells us heaven and earth and all that exist, God is not simply the creator of these, but he is the, the, the guard, the protector. He holds back heaven and earth from, from dissolving, from dissipating, from becoming nil. And if they become nothing, the day will come when they will become nothing, it is God that will restore them and nobody else can. So his names and attributes are many and it's the, part of the reason why we um, it's in the, in the Muslim tradition, there is a huge emphasis, but this is also to be found in Jewish traditions, in Christian, and even in, in many of the Hindu traditions. Uh, we know of Hinduism as a, uh, a, a, a polytheistic tradition, a tradition that believes in many gods, but actually some of the oldest um, of the Hindu scriptures speak of the fact that the the, 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 the essential God, the essential creator is but one and his manifestations are many and these are meant to be metaphors. And, you know, and then th people run away with themselves and, and images, particularly in the minds of men and women and, 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 and uh, people, can become uh, crystallized into independent and, and existent forms. But the essence of all things is one. And this hadith is a beautiful hadith because the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever guards these names of God will enter paradise through them. Inna Allah witrun yuhibbul witr. And God is a singular entity. God is singular. So you can, this is an indication. God is merciful and compassionate. The servant is required to also be merciful and compassionate. God is hearing and seeing and he made you and me hearing it and seeing. In fact, uh, a very beautiful verse of the Quran says, uh, uh, There is not a thing that is comparable to him, not a thing that is akin to him, not a single thing that is like him. And he is hearing and seeing. And immediately after making this grand statement, nothing can compare whatsoever to God, he chooses of all of the different attributes that he could have named, mentioned about himself, two that everyone lays claim to. Everyone here is he hearing and seeing. The vast majority of human beings and of animals of the, 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 the known kingdom that we interact are 
can be described as hearing and seeing. So he opts for, because he could have said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْخَالِقُ الرَّازِقُ There is nothing like him and he's the creator and the sustainer. And then we'd say it's true because nobody else can lay claim to being a creator. So no one can be like him. But what he does instead, excuse me, what he does instead is to say, no, there is nothing whatsoever like him. And even in the attributes in which you can consider yourselves, most and the whole of creation to have some kind of a, 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 a similarity to him, you are nothing like him. For your hearing and seeing are nothing compared to his hearing and seeing. You can only see up to like this peripheral angle of about here. So, th and that's it. I can't see, I can see the whole of the world, but I can't see someone who's right behind my head. So all of those photo bombing opportunities and things, right? You can't, you can hear, but I can't hear if, if someone's w just in front of me and they're, they're speaking under their muttering uh, under their breath, I can't hear that. And people who, two, three, four, five people start speaking, I need to ask everyone to calm down, to quieten down. I can only hear one person at a time. I, can, I can't manage so many sounds. I can see you and I can't see what's directly behind you. And the eye, this great metaphor for all, for the, for, 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 for the human being that looks out onto the whole world but is blind to itself. You've never seen your own eye. You can't see your own eye. That the, that through which you see all things, itself is incapable of sight. So it's just a window. So, and then there is God, and nothing is hidden from him. The very, uh, the Quran says, uh, he, لَا تُدْرِكُهُ الْأَبْصَارُ وَهُوَ يُدْرِكُ الْأَبْصَارَ Vision cannot grasp him while he grasps even vision. That is huge. Vision can't grasp him while he grasps even vision, وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is the subtle. So subtle you can't ever put your finger on him. الْخَبِيرُ And the fully acquainted. He's not ignorant or a stranger to anything. Vision can't grasp him. He grasps even vision. He grasps even the fact of, a, of, 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 of uh, light bouncing off a surface and travelling uh, a photon as it travels and collides into the back of through the retina and it and makes and triggers a response electronically and that's reconfigured into an image and I can see you and I you know for all I know really um, this could all be a dream you could all be uh, some kind of uh, generated hologram image but I trust that you're here and you trust I'm here and I trust that you know, the hat he's wearing is black and, uh, and, and you see it black too and I trust that what I think is black is the same as what you think is black and what I think is green. I've been saying all my life, the grass is green and you say, yep, the grass is green. But what if you're seeing green as blue and that's green to you? So, you know, this is, we, 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 we're dependent on all of these things. If you ever go into one of those places where they have, what are they called, a luminarium? Have you been in one? No, it's like, a it's like stepping into a great big bouncy castle. It's inflated and it lets in light in different ways. No white light is allowed in. So everything now, and you realise really all we're seeing is from the spectrum of, of, of the rainbow, right? The, the spectrum of colours that we are able to pick up. When I see his top as red, it's just that the red is the only thing that's not being absorbed. His top has really no other colour that distinguishes it from anything else, except it happens to reflect that one colour of the spectrum. Anyway, whatever, you know about these things. The point is, he sees and we see and hear and he sees and hears, and there is nothing that compares whatsoever to him. In the names and attributes that we can identify with ourselves, the only sharing is in the name. We call ourselves Samir Basir, people who can hear and see, and he is as Samir the truly seeing, the truly hearing, the truly hearing, the truly seeing, as Samia al-Basir. And of all of those great names and attributes, and languages have, every tradition has many, and we speak of, Christianity speaks of God as love, and Islam speaks of Allah as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Wadud, the most merciful and compassionate, the loving. And these are, this is what I meant to be sort of concentrating on today. So of all of these great names, the, um, the, 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 if you like, the 
currency of creation is the attribute of compassion. The currency of creation is, and that is what God interacts with creation with. And Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim relate this beautiful hadith and in which Abu Huraira tells us the Prophet ﷺ said, When God decreed creation, when he decided I'm going to bring into existence stuff, people, things, angels, human beings, and whatever other beings exist and have existed and will ever exist. When he, in the first moment that he decreed to bring from non-existence into existence, كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ كَتَبَ فِي كِتَابِهِ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ He prescribed a rule upon himself. He, he, he beheld himself to a code and put it down in writing. فَهُوَ مَوْضُوعٌ عِنْدَهِ in, in, in uh, uh, a manuscript that is with him. So what, what's this great rule, this great principle that he, is the first law he lays down at the moment of decreeing creation. إِنَّ رَحْمَتِي تَغْلِبُ غَضَبِي Surely my compassion, my mercy, will overwhelm my anger, my wrath. So that is the first of the attributes. The very first of all attributes by which he engages with creation is that he is a merciful and a compassion and a loving creator. It was not to spite or to smite or to bring death and destruction and doom upon people, to subject to misery, people, things. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith, he says, uh, an, uh, a prophet of the past was traveling and he said, Nabiyun min al -anbi. he didn't say who it was. And some of the scholars said maybe it was Suleiman because there's a mention of Suleiman, but we don't know that. You know, Suleiman, as he's going with his uh, troops and there's an ant, Surah An-Naml, and there's an ant and it says, oh, Suleiman and his forces are coming, everyone hide. So, but the hadith says, a prophet from amongst the prophets was stung by an ant. And this um, upset him greatly. فَأَمَرَ بِهَا أَن تُحْرَقْ So he ordered for the whole colony, the nest of ants, to be burnt. Right? He wasn't a prophet who took very kindly to being bitten by ants. So one ant. فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ And in one riwayah, فَأَرْسَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ جبريل. So God sent to him revelation. Or he sent Gabriel to him with a question, فَهَلَّا نَمْلَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ Why wasn't it only a single ant that you took out your retribution against? And in a riwayah, أُمَّةٌ مِنَ الْأُمَمْ تُسَبِّحُ لِي أَحْرَقْتَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ أَنْ لَدَغَدْكِ This was a community amongst communities that glorified my name. You destroy all of them because of one of them hurting you. The Prophet sallallahu oh, alaihi wasallam. Oh, is there a problem? Yeah, the board's on again. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Oh, uh, is that me? Sorry. I'll put this here. So he said, um, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, uh, a woman kanat baghiyatan min baghaya bani Israel. A woman from the from the children from the people of Israel of ill repute, baghiya, like a, a working girl, a person who uh, made money through se uh, selling her, herself, uh, a harlot, um, walked past a, a, a lane and was on a very hot day, a very, very hot day, when she came upon a well. So she slipped off her khuf, her slipper, and she scoops out some water and she can drink and quench her thirst. And just as she's finished doing that, she sees a dog and the dog's got its tongue hanging out and it's, it's, being, it's, it's in agonizing thirst. And she realizes, she, she recognizes, Asabahu ma kana asabini. This dog's experiencing, it's going through what I was going through. But I had the means to be able to, to, to quench my thirst and it can't. It can't reach into the well. So that prompts her to bend down into the well, to reach into the well, and scoop out some more water, and this time give it to the dog. And the Prophet, this hadith sahih, Imam al-Bukhari narrates, and she was a prostitute. فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهَا ذلك. And God appreciated this from her. Of God's amazing names, one is Ash-Shakir, or Ash-Shakur. God is the, the one who th is thankful. 
Isn't that crazy? He's thankful. He's appreciative. You know, you say, shukran, thank you. Or, tashakir edirim, if you go to Turkey. Tashakir, shukran, shukriya. God is, God is shakur. He's thankful. What's he got? Who, who's he thanking? Nothing exists except he brought it into existence. But he appreciates any act of goodness and he's, he's thankful for that. Shakar Allahu laha dhalik. God appreciated that from her. Faghafara laha. And decreed that she would be forgiven. And so rahmah is this vast. And Muslims know this because, or should know this, because we know that God has many names, many more than 99 as we know now. And yet the two that you repeat the most often when you start anything, of course, it's Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the very merciful, the very compassionate. And it could have been so anything else. Bismillah Al-Aziz Al-Jabbar. In the name of God, the mighty and the uh, indomitable. In the name of Allah, the creator and the... But, there are so, but it's Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Classically, the first hadith that students of knowledge would go and learn at, from a shaykh, a shaykh of hadith. The very first hadith he'd narrate to them is a hadith that actually became referred to later as al-hadith al-musalsal bil awwaliyya, the hadith uh, which is consistently narrated first. Which every hadith master would, w this would be the first hadith he'd impart to his students, to those who came seeking knowledge from him. And that hadith is, does anybody know? Apart from those guys over there. Because <laughs> they've, they've, they've been through that process. But anybody, does, can anyone guess? What do you think is the first hadith that uh, classic, and this is an, a tradition of, uh, that, that has existed for centuries and centuries. Take a guess. Yeah. You might think that, because that's the first one that Imam Bukhari starts his Sahih with, but it's not that. So you don't know? And it's a shame, because people should know this. Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhumur Rahman is a hadith related by Abu Huraira. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal Allahu azza wa jal, Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhumur Rahman. Those who show mercy, those who are themselves merciful, he, he that is most merciful is merciful to them. Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman. The most merciful is merciful to those who show mercy. Irhamu man fil ard. Show mercy. Be compassionate to those on earth. Yarhamkum man fi sama. And he that is in the heavens will be merciful to you. So mercy and compassion is this great, huge thing. In fact, there's one hadith in Bukhari and, and, and Muslim. They both relate this. And it's like, subhanAllah, the Prophet says, and this is a hadith Qudsi, that uh, when God created Lama, and you know, the Arabic word Rahma, it comes from, or, or a cognate of that, is something that only a woman has. Rahim, the womb. And it's not a coincidence. The Prophet says, this is related by Tirmidhi, he said, and it's a hadith Qudsi, Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ana Allah wa Ana Rahman khalaqtu rahim wa shaqaqtu lahu min asmi. I am God. Allah, by the way, I should have pointed out, it's not the Arab or the Muslim God. In fact, if you pick up a translation of the Bible, if you pick up the Bible in Arabic, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and all of those things. Or how does Genesis begin? In the beginning, John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So I'll do that. Fil bad'i kanatil kalima wal kalimatu ma'allah. In the beginning, God created. Fil bad'i khalaq Allah. Allah. All over the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Allah is not some exclusive. In fact, Allah is uh, the, the uh, definite article al. The and ilah, God. Allah simply, and a compression of those two, a compound from these. Al ilah, Allah, the God. God with a big G. God with a capital G. That's God. So it's God. The only one who is truly worthy of worship. The only one who is truly, uh, who truly deserves uh, adoration. 
And, um, and the Quran begins Al-Fatiha, the first verse of the Quran, uh, or the uh, first chapter of the Quran, called the, key, the opening. Not only is it the opening to the Quran, it's the opening to a journey towards God. Is an invocation, like the Lord's Prayer, if you like. And Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of God, merciful, compassionate. All praises to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. All praises to God, Lord of all the worlds. And the reason, uh, we say this all the time. People say, hey, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How are, you, how, how are things going? Alhamdulillah. Your exams? Astaghfirullah. <laughs> no. Alhamdulillah. How, how's everything going? Alhamdulillah. Al praise to Allah. No, inshallah, you guys are Bristol University students. I'm sure you don't say that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes people, Muslims do use quite a lot. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, inshallah, which is nice. And it's nice because even non-religious Arabs say, so, Alhamdulillah, kweis. You know, that's, that's just, uh, the language is almost, it's designed to be. And it's a little, goodbye. Did you know, do you know what the etymology of goodbye is? God be with you. That's literally what goodbye is. Good by. By is be with you. Uh, so all of our languages were deeply, you know, God is at the heart of it because God was in the heart of us. And so our languages, when we communicate, the, the very process of, of, we spoke of God in everything we did. And as God, languages move away from that, then it, you know, things distance themselves. But Alhamdulillah, it's not just a praise to God. It's a statement. Praise belongs to Him. Praise is His. That, that's like a statement of fact. So why is praise his? What if someone's an atheist? They can praise the sunset. They can praise a beautiful smile. They can praise uh, music. They can praise uh, a fragrance. You can praise the, 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 the beautiful child, right? Well, because any time you've ever praised anything, by our nature, inbuilt inside us, is an appreciation of beauty. What I said earlier, to God belongs the most beautiful of names, beauty. Beauty is what human beings appreciate. And in Allah Jamil, and beautiful is God. Beauty is His, Yuhibbul Jamal. And He has He loves beauty. And so He created creation. He that made all that He created beautiful. The Quran tells it. So some people are like, oh, if only I was a little bit taller, a little bit a little bit slimmer, a little bit bulkier my nose or my uh, eyebrows or my something or other. But in the sight of God, and this isn't like saying, oh, you know, a face that only your mother could love. Not that type of a thing. But genuinely, genuinely, right? Uh, genuinely, الَّذِي أَحْسَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقًا He says, he that made beautiful all that he created. He hasn't created a thing and deemed it ugly, unsightly. He's created everything he created. And from lowly earth or clay did he begin the, the creation of man. And then, and the verses go on, that he from that clay he, he, made his, he fashioned his form. So Alhamdulillah is a statement to say praise is God's because you can praise a beautiful art piece of artwork like this, right? And you don't even know who did that. But you can say, wow, that, that's really nicely done. It's a good design. It's, you know, I like the, whatever, the aesthetics of this, right? And, and you don't know who's done that. You don't know if it's someone, if it was a man or a woman, if it was somebody from here or from abroad, someone who's living or dead. But your praise, praise for the art is inevitably praise for the artist. You can't praise the thing without being, in effect, rendering, paying tribute to the, the originator, the one who's fashioned the thing. So whenever a human being has appreciated anything beautiful, anything good, in the depth of your heart you've felt joy at a thing, warmth and love and happiness and desire uh, for, for good, recognition of good, you are pray that is that act is an act of paying tribute to God and therefore alhamdulillah praise is God's Lord of all the worlds Rabbil Alameen and I'm, I need to wrap up and um, as I su suggested at the start it's a tall order so I'm going to wrap with a couple of quick points mercy and compassion the believer 
Therefore, what does it mean to be? There's a, an athar, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ الله. Adorn yourselves with the attributes of God. Like try to, try to, God is compassionate, be compassionate. Like this hadith says to us, those who show mercy, receive mercy. مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ God's messenger had his, grand, had his son who died in infancy. He was holding his body because the child had just, had, had just died. And he, and he held his body in his arms. And he wept. And a man saw him and said, you're weeping, but you're the prophet of God. You're meant to like, put everything onto all. And he said, إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ رَحْمَةٌ But this is mercy. This is an expression of mercy. And he, he, he said this, also he said, العين تدمع والقلب يحزن. The eye sheds tears and the heart grieves. وَلَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِي رَبَّنَا تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى But the tongue shall only utter that which is pleasing to the Lord, blessed is he. And he said, وَإِنَّا بِفِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَمَحْزُونُونَ And by your parting, O Ibrahim, that was the name of his son, we are grieved. But even in the act of feeling pain, he gives praise to God. For to God is all that he gives and to God belongs all that he takes away. And it's okay because all things from him that are come from him are with a, uh, a set time, are to a set time. So it's okay, we'll meet again. This isn't the end. This isn't oblivion. This isn't... I'm never going to see my child again. I'm that, that, you know, a loved one, that's a deep thing. You're, all of you are young people, and, uh, but you know, when a person loses their mother or their father or, or, or a sibling uh, or a child, right? That is a deeply painful experience. And the greatest pain for anybody really is that to try to get your head around the fact that you will never experience those moments again because what's happened is gone. And it's now just a memory. It's only here. And that smile, that laughter, that warmth, that embrace, that the things that they did and their crazy, quirky, funny ways that made you smile, uh, all that, that's gone forever. Except it's not if there, is, if there is a continuation. So Allah is merciful and compassionate. Muslims are meant to be, or the servants of God. And um, the brother we from Surah Al-Rahman, but the verse I'm thinking of is actually from Surah Al-Furqan. Allah says, وَعِبَادُ Rahman." So what does it mean to be a believer? Because we can talk a good talk, and God's merciful and compassionate, peace be upon you, Allahu Akbar. And then usually, like, according to the media, there's going to be an explosion next. <laughs> All right, so no. So it's easy to talk a good talk. What does it mean to be compassionate? وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The servants of Ar-Rahman. And God could have said the servants of Allah, عِبَادُ الله, The servants of God. But he said, the servants of Ar-Rahman, the most compassionate and merciful. He that worships his Lord, knowing that his Lord is a Lord of mercy and compassion. And he that seeks mercy and compassion from his Lord, or she. What, 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 what impact does that have on, on the, the individual? Yamshuna al ardi hawna. They take light steps upon the earth. They're afraid of upsetting even the earth that they walk upon. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ And when ignorant people address them, when people with hatred and anger and animosity that are uh, the, the, the product of ignorance come to them, they don't fight back. قَالُوا سَلَامَ They say, peace be upon you. For you are my brother or my sister, even though you don't see it. You're not seeing that you're my brother. doesn't mean you're not, you're my, you're, you're not my, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're the servant of my creator. He, fit, he created you and he gave life to you. And therefore, the, the, the act of taking life is the most heinous of crimes. And the Quran tells us, tell them the story of the two sons of Adam. How one of them took the life of the other. And Cain and Abel, right? Adam's two boys, two sons, and one strikes the other dead. And it's a very moving verse, uh, passage. And then Allah says, and he describes it in great detail, great detail, the way that one struck down and killed the other and he's dead. And Adam has to go and explain to his wife, Hawa, what's just happened. They've not experienced death before. This is the first mortality there. So he says to her, Mata ibnuki, your son is dead. 
And she says, وَمَا مَات What does it mean that he's dead? What is to be dead? So he says, رَقَدْ فَلَا يَقُومْ He's lying down, he'll never stand again. وَسَكَنْ فَلَا يَتَحَرَّكْ He's still, he'll never move again. وَسَكَدْ فَلَا يَنْطِقْ And he's silent, he'll never speak again. And she weeps. That's what it means to be dead. Why? Why, why did that happen to him? And the Quran describes this in, in very graphic, and he, this one killed the other. And having killed him, he wasn't sure what to do next. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ خُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفِ يُوَارِي سَوْأَةَ أَخِيهِ So God had to send a crow that dug up looking for worms, a hole in the earth, to give him, to intimate to him how to dispose of his brother's body. قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتْ أَعَجَزْتُ أَنَا كُنَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُلَاءِ مَادَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْأَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ And he said, wow, am I so ignorant that I couldn't even, or so helpless, I, I couldn't even work out what this crow has done and know how to dispose of my brother's body properly. And then he began to regret. What did he re regret? The fact that he's so ignorant and yet he was able to extinguish the, the flicker of life. Because what is life after all, other than the breath of God? He says, نَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ min ruhihi. He breathed into man of his own spirit. And the Muslim tradition has always been very, very clear that man is generic. It's man, woman, human being, Adam, Eve, and their offspring, their sons and their daughters. That God breathed into man, into the human being, of his own spirit. And they became hearing, seeing people, beings with hearts that felt. And that can be extinguished like that by the stab of a knife, by, by the firing of a gun, by someone who's utterly ignorant otherwise. After this point, Allah then says, because of this, we then let it be known to the children of Israel. Any that takes a life, anyone that takes a life, not a believer, not a Muslim, not someone of your sect, not someone of your, whose beard is the right length, or anyone that takes a life, unless there is a just cause, a life for a life, or because of, uh, you know, so if someone killed Adolf Hitler, there wouldn't be a huge amount of, 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 you know, sort of weeping at that. But anyone who takes a life without just cause. It is th as though he has killed, taken not one life, as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Why? And, and first of all, what, you kill a person, right? Um, or, or someone kills somebody else. Let's say, uh, uh, I mean, purely hypothetically, in America, like a police officer shoots down a black guy. Not that anything like that could happen in our day and age, I'm sure, with impunity. But one person shoots another. An Israeli kills a Palestinian, a Palestinian kills an Israeli, a, a Muslim kills a, a Christian, a Christian kills a Jew. Anytime a human being kills another human being, any time that happens, as far as you're concerned, that's just another. And the, and the reason this happens is because you, you can distance yourself from the other. And the Qur'an draws it back, forces us to see this back in the context of one brother killing another brother, the two sons of Adam. Because no human being has ever killed another human being except that he's killed his own brother or his own sister. Because as far removed from you as they can possibly be, if their skin and their hair and the shape of their nose and the language they speak and the food they eat and the clothes they wear are as alien to you as if they were from another planet, they are still the son and daughter of your parents, Adam and Eve. They are still the creation of the Lord you worship. Look at the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And therefore Allah said, whenever any human being has taken the life of another, it is as though he has killed all of humanity. Why all of humanity? Because you've killed your own humanity. In taking a life, you've killed yourself. Or well, every life has to die, right? If someone, you know, if everybody in this room, we pray, God keeps us safe and protects us and we're not victims of, of, of anyone's murderous designs, we still have to die one day, 50, 60, 70 years from now, if that, but you know, there's a point at which no one who's in this room will be alive. Whatever means, natural or otherwise, whatever, so life has to end. But to take a life, to hurt a life, is to destroy life. And so the Prophet and I'm, I'm kind of out of time, so I better start wrapping. Mercy is the essential attribute of God. 
Religion is meant to be a promotion of and a celebration of that mercy. And yet, I mean, do we have Q&A? We have Q&A, so that's okay. So if anybody wants to ask any questions, uh, then please do. But, you know, there are some big ones, aren't there, that come about that are, that are related to this. The question of evil. The question of, like, the penal code, chopping off of hands and the lashing of adulterers doesn't sound particularly merciful. So these are questions which you may or may not be interested in asking, but I'm out of time as far as the speech is concerned. Uh, so we'll end it here just on the note that um, with the attributes of r mercy, of compassion, and the attributes of beauty, something amazing is created, and that is love. So Christians say God is love. We don't quite say exactly that or in, that, in those words in the Muslim tradition because love is a bit abstract, it's a feeling, it's an emotion. But love comes from two things. It comes from the capacity for tenderness within the individual and the appreciation of beauty uh, externally. So there's an internal ability for uh, uh, capacity for tenderness and an external recognition of beauty. And when these two things happen, love happens. And all of our poets and in all languages and cultures and traditions have expended huge amounts of uh, energy in, po in prose and poetry, in all of our literature, in, 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 in whether it's Shakespeare or whether it's the Persian uh, romances or whether it's the Arabian uh, Muslim, Arab version of, um, of, of Romeo and Juliet, Leila and her guy, what was his name? See, Majnun. Majnun's not really his name. Majnun means nuts, mental. And his mum didn't call him that. But they, he became known as Majnun because he was known as Majnunu Leila, the guy who's crazy, he's mental about Leila. So much so that very few people actually remember that his name was actually... Anybody? Qais ibn al mulawah Like, Layla and Qais, have you heard this one? No. Layla Majnun, yeah, we know Layla Majnun. So he's like uh, legendary stuff. Aburru ala diyari diyari Layla uqabilu dhal jidara wa dhal jidara wa ma hubbu diyari shagafta qalbi wa lakin hubbu man sakana diyara I pass by the walls, the walls of the town of Layla. Sometimes I kiss this wall, sometimes that wall. It's not the love of walls that has enraptured my heart, but the love of her that lives somewhere within these walls. Someone saw him pet petting a dog once. And, and like, so they said, what are you doing? Why, 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 if you become a dog lover? He said, no, but one time I saw this dog run down the street and she came out of her home. And I'm fairly sure it, it ran past her skirts. Now, Anas ibn Malik, okay, let's take it back a bit. Anas ibn Malik, a, a companion of the Prophet, he was 10 years old when the Prophet came to Medina. His mom walked, marched him to the Prophet and said, Prophet of God, this is my son, his name's Anas. I want him to be your servant. I want him to learn from you and to be like your apprentice, Khadim. And the Prophet said, that's very nice of you. And he can come to the masjid whenever he wants. And, you know, he didn't allow him to stay with him as a servant. But he said he can come and go as he pleases. And Anas said, Khadamtu Rasulullah Ashra San Sinin, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was God's messenger's uh, uh, his 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 assistant for ten years. Never once did he say to me, Oof, because of a thing I did wrong. Nor did he say to me, Why didn't you do something when he told me to do it and I failed? Or go and do that when I when I when I had it. So he never he never told me off. And Anas ibn Malik, so he was a 10-year-old kid, and, and kids are by nature quite rebellious. And when they get to 10, and then 11 and 12, they're like, what? Who's going to tell me what to do? And he went through all of those years, and he said, God's messenger never once rebuked me. And then he says, he narrates this beautiful hadith. You know that, that Qais um, ibn so he sees the dog, and he, he starts petting it. Anas says, I was eating with God's messenger once, and there was a dubba, which is like a marrow, like a pumpkin. In the, in, the, in the soup. And I noticed that he'd pick out the duban, eat it, and I realized he likes this. And from that day, I fell in love with this particular vegetable too. Whenever I see it, I want to eat it because it reminds me of my prophet. So that's a beautiful thing, right? That, that love by association. 
all of our history, all of our romances, the greatest uh, novels and, 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 and you know, poetry, films, romances, rom-coms, all of these things just devoted to this singular aspect, this ability for one person to feel so deeply about another. The question is why? And it's not purely about uh, reproduction because spiders hit it off without sending flowers or, or, or chocolates or, and they've managed to reproduce and do really well with themselves. So, in fact, they get eaten up, the poor things, some of them, don't they? The male of the species. So, uh, some would say, not that dissimilar with us either. <laughs> but I wouldn't know about that. I'm only joking. Now, you should all get married as soon as you can. It's an excellent thing. Okay. Um, so, the question is, why? Why? Why do people love? Why do we have the capacity? Human beings, we're like five foot something or six foot something. And then you've got the capacity for this thing that's deeper than oceans and vaster than the horizons and, and you can't eat and sleep and you're starstruck. Why the capacity? Because really, it's the only, it's inbuilt and we fall in love. We love, a mother loves a child like no other love. And the child hurts the mother like no other pain. Anyone who's witnessed a child entering this world will know this. And anyone that's witnessed this pain and the struggles of a mother who's just given birth and sleep is the most beloved thing to her in the whole world, get up when she's not had any because of the cry of a child and she's unable to rest or to ignore it and to feed it. And that process of breastfeeding is very painful. And all of these things that our mothers did for us and here we are today, right? So there's love, love throughout creation. And, you know, this is a hadith as well. It's very authentic. The Prophet said, God made mercy, compassion, love and tenderness into a hundred parts and he dropped one of those parts into creation and because of that one portion of the mercy that is God's that he dropped into creation all of created things are abuzz with, with tenderness, compassion, mercy and we see that People say, if there's God, why is there evil? The question really is, if there wasn't God, how would you know good from evil? That you know, you know it's wrong that someone should abuse another or hurt another or cause another to feel pain. Words can do that. How crazy is that? The way that I expel air out of my lungs and through my voice box, a muscle that's contracted, that causes vibrations in the air bouncing against an eardrum, can make you break down in tears or laugh out loud, lol, right? Just that. And you've said something and somebody else has laughed. You've said something and somebody else has cried. The capacity to do that is mercy, is compassion, and that is God's. The reason we have that, وَأَمْسَكَ عِنْدَهُ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And the Prophet said, and God kept 99 portions of His love and mercy and compassion to meet his creation with on the last day. Why do we love? Because should we one day meet God, it's the only appropriate response. Why do we love? We love beauty wherever we see it. And we have the capacity to love for the day that we may one day recognize that the source of all that is beautiful is creator of heaven and earth. I'm going to end on this note, inshallah. I've, there's so much more that I wanted to share and I've taken a roundabout route. So if there are Q&A uh, or an opportunity for that, maybe you can bring some things up. Otherwise, uh, great meeting you. Asalaamu As Alaikum Keep the faith